Okay, welcome. This is Hello World. This is a challenge that starts off the type challenges. It's just a sort of warm up that gets you set with what the development environment looks like, how the tests work, and we'll talk to you about how we're going to approach them. So you can click type, take the challenge. It gives you a description here, which is kind of nice. But you can also go down here at the bottom and click share your solution if you have a solution you'd like to share. Or my favorite part, you can click check out solutions at the bottom, this pink button, and that will show you different people's uh, take on how to solve the problem. Sometimes there are ones that don't work anymore because the tests get updated over time. But yeah, let's let's click take the challenge there. So we are presented with a bunch of different tests and some code. There's this block here, your, your code here. So the idea is we don't change anything above the line and we just set something here. So in this case, it's really easy. Uh, there, look, we ta -da, we, pa we need a semicolon. Okay, got to have that semicolon. We passed. So this one's pretty simple. It doesn't actually look like this when you start. If you've done the challenges before, you've probably seen a different sort of format. Uh, it looks a little bit like this. In this case, uh, I want to explain that the reason I don't do it this way is twofold. The first is that I'm using a 60 character limit in these challenges because it's kind of hard to... Um, look at this stuff on a phone and I'm hyper aware of that because I watch coding videos and things on my phone and I hate it when somebody zoomed way out when they have plenty of space and they could have zoomed in. So I want to make it accessible for people watching on their phones. So we've kept to a 60 character limit. Some of the challenges, uh, I'll show you one here, like here's is union. It doesn't really fit very well in the 60 character limit. There's a lot of stuff on the screen here and it's easier if they can be split up into different sections. And the other reason is that when you hover over one of the things here, you, it's difficult to see, um, I don't know, it's difficult to see sometimes what the actual type evaluates to. Um, so I think it's can be really easy if you can just split them up. So I do split them up. Um, the other thing is some of them give hints on generics. Like, I don't, I don't know what is union is, but, um, you know, they'll do something like that and it'll start like this. Uh, I don't do that either because sometimes actually, if you look through solutions that people have, sometimes you don't need the generic, uh, types. And also I think it's good exercise. This is a learning tool. So it's a good exercise to get into the habit of thinking about generic constraints. As you watch the videos, you're going to see that in a lot of cases, the very first thing we do is set up what the generic constraints are. So again, that's, well, you'll see the videos when you see what that looks like and how that works, but it's kind of basically what I just did here, right? This is constraining T to a unknown array. So yeah, that's basically the, the challenges and, and how they work. We don't need to save that one. If you'd like to follow along, you can do that. The examples are going to be on GitHub. Um, the other final thing I want to say is that the approach that we're using for these challenges is kind of not super beast mode. Uh, some people are really adamant that you shouldn't be able to use any built-ins while you're doing them. Uh, indeed, for almost all of them, I don't think we we do use any built-ins, but I also do show alternatives that use the built-ins. And I think the reason for that should be pretty obvious. It's because this is a learning tool. And in your day-to-day -day life, you should definitely use the built-ins. I mean, use the built-ins a lot. Don't rewrite things by hand if exclude is what you actually need or uh, omit is what you actually need. So I think it's probably a good exercise to use the built-ins. The, you know, the caveat is you've got to understand what the built-ins do. Thankfully, we have challenges that cover the built-ins. So hopefully that all works out in the end. And uh, yeah, so don't, don't start a flame war in the comments if you see built-ins being used here and there. Uh, predominantly, it should only be after we've solved the built-in example. So if we did the one for exclude, there's a challenge for exclude. I think it's fair game to use exclude later. And in fact... As you get deeper into the challenges, there are some of them, I think it's like all combinations that uses like five different prior challenges just to like have something to get started to solve the problem. And I think it's very legit to use solutions that we used that we came up with in prior videos. So there's going to be some of that too. And you'll hear me saying, if uh, you want to see how this works, if you want to know how this, you know, how we came up with this, please go watch that video first and then come back here. So you'll see that too. I don't think that's cheating either. And uh, yeah, well, we're really looking forward to everybody's reaction to all the videos and please chime in in the comments. I get a lot personally out of seeing what people say in the comments. I'm going to do my best to respond to everyone and uh, we'll look forward to the rest of this journey together. So see you on the next video.